As a musician and artist, you wear many hats. From songwriter, producer, content creator, manager, distributor, the list goes on. So it's no wonder that so many musicians and so many artists suffer with mental health problems. For most artists and creatives, this is about building something long-term that you are proud of, which means this is about lifestyle choices and not tensing muscles. Tensing muscles can only be done for a short period of time, but lifestyle choices can go on indefinitely, removing a lot of this anxiety which builds up into mental health. So today I want to look at 12 rules that can fundamentally help with mental health, especially in music, making this a more enjoyable process and how you treat you. But before we go into those 12 rules, there are a couple of extra things which I haven't even added. For example, sleep, food and exercise. These are the things that can really help build routine. You know, as musicians, we do tend to be night owls because we're gigging or because we're writing. All of a sudden it's 2 or 3 a.m. and you haven't gone to bed and then waking up in the morning becomes harder. When you are on the road, eating food becomes slightly difficult because you can't stop off for some healthy food. So all of these things help with a routine and I would say before any of these rules, those are the fundamentals which will help the most. Your sleep patterns, your food to keep you, like your brain exercised, and then your physical exercise and your physical well-being. Number one is preparation. One of the biggest contributors to anxiety is when you feel out of control or there's too much to do and not enough time. And preparation is the key. This is about how you can set yourself up to succeed instead of set yourself up to fail. So this is all of the things to go in of preparing before you do something. If I said to you, well, a song's only three minutes, so you've got three minutes, write me a song, you'd say, well, that's utterly ridiculous. But this is exactly how most artists are treating their marketing and treating their content creation. If you look at micro content, you might be a, a 10 second reel or a 10 second TikTok. And so many artists will want to be able to do that within 10 to 30 seconds with no preparation. So allocating time to prepare is a fundamental, not only researching what you are going to make, but also when and where you are going to make it. For example, this shot might take 10, 15, 20 minutes to set up. It isn't something that I can just hold my phone up and just talk in the camera and expect the algorithm to do the rest of the work. Now, don't get me wrong, off the cuff content is fantastic, but but if you hang your hat on all of your content being off the cuff, i.e. just in the right place at the right time, I'm here, I'll make some content, most of that won't be pleasing the algorithm. Most of it won't go viral. So therefore, we need the time to research what works. We need the time in the Discover page. We need the, t the time to figure out what we want to make, when we want to make it, where we want to make it, and what that will look like. Number two, micro improvements or the 1% rule. Most people are looking for that massive big swing, that viral sensation, that one single that changes your life. And don't get me wrong, that can happen. But that's a big gamble. It's like going into a boxing match of 12 rounds thinking, I've got one punch, let's hope it lands. Chances are it doesn't land and what are you gonna do next? Whereas if we are thinking about micro improvements, i.e. what can I do today that brings value to an audience? Or what can I do today that promotes my music? Just one thing or 1% improvement, now you are thinking about a different strategy. You are thinking about one foot in front of the other. How do you climb the mountain? I don't know, it looks crazy, it's so far, it's so high, it's, it's the impossible. Whereas if I'm concentrating on, hang on a minute, how do I put one foot in front of the other and keep going? Not concentrating at all about just getting to the top, but concentrating on the journey and the micro improvements, then over a period of time, you're starting to break things down. You're starting to get further towards that summit. If everything that you do is all about that big swing and every time you miss, all you're doing is building up that anxiety, building up that fear of failure because it isn't working and you have to go again and the disappointment is real. So stop thinking about the big swing and start thinking about one foot in front of the other. Number three is about your focus, or more importantly, your vision. And most artists think of vision as a number. Your number on Spotify, your number on YouTube, your number of followers on Instagram. But these are targets, this is not a vision. The same way as when we're putting one foot in front of the other, the mountain, the peak, the summit, that is the vision. But it's not about something vague and subjective, for example, I wanna be famous, I wanna be rich, I wanna be successful. 
These are just words that are subjective, that they don't have real meaning. What does that actually mean to be subjective? How famous is famous? How rich is rich? These are just goals that you put in as these random, I'm not there yet, so I'll just keep going until I feel happy. So we've got to start thinking about what is a tangible vision and not just what is a target that I'm working towards. Now, the reason why this takes away from your anxiety and helps your mental health is because when you know where your vision is, it means everything that comes in, you start thinking to yourself, is this helping me focus on that vision? If it's not, I can get rid of it. I can keep moving towards my vision, as opposed to these targets, which will become never ending and frustrating. Guys, quick interruption. You're clearly releasing music and serious about getting results. So have you checked out DK Music Business Academy? It's got over 50 hours worth of courses, including the Roadmap to 1 Million Streams course. What have you got to lose? Seven day free trial, links in the description. Let's crack on with the video. Number four is routine, and routine builds consistency. That's right, the C word. The C word that everyone drops from billionaires to successful artists. The problem is, as creatives, we find consistency a lot of the time quite difficult. Not only because we're trying to balance everything from, from money and work and family, as well as the creative and the organization and the managing, but as well as that, our brains have tended to rebel because we're creatives. We don't want to do the norm. We don't want to do the nine to five. But consistency and routine is how you build that momentum. It's how you get faster and faster and faster until it starts to take over. And instead of you pushing it, it's dragging you along. Now, the thing with routine is it doesn't have to be extreme, but you're looking for this consistency from when you wake up to when you go to sleep. What you do, when you do it, how you do it. You're not trying to reinvent the wheel every single day. Instead of waking up and just thinking, what do I want to do today? you're thinking, no, no, I've got my routine. I know exactly what I need to achieve every single day. And those micro targets, which lead you to that vision, help with that mental health, the anxiety, and also making sure that you are building this momentum, making you feel like you are achieving and getting closer to your goals. Number five, inspiration, not motivation. For me, motivation is completely overrated and inspiration is everything. Being inspired to play, being inspired to practice, being inspired to songwrite is a very, very different to having to find motivation. It feels like you're, you're struggling and needing to find motivation to do something. Whereas if you're not feeling inspired, you can go looking for that inspiration. You can go and read a book or go for a walk or meet someone or have a conversation or watch something and come up with these ideas that inspire you to want to come up with your best work. Number six, the calendar fixes everything. Now, if I had one tip, this would be it. This is the rule that I hang my hat on, which is the calendar fixes everything. And the reason for that is because how many times has it got to five in the evening and you think, oh, I've got to post something on social media. Oh, what shall I post? You start rummaging through your phone or try to think of something to make. All of that anxiety, all of that pressure and that stress only for the next day to do it again. Now the calendar takes all of this away because now I'm not thinking about when I'm going to post. I'm thinking about when I'm going to create. I'm thinking about planning, about taking all of the stress because I'm being guided through my day. This is when I'm going to research. This is when I'm going to create. This is when I'm going to phone those radio stations. This is when I'm going to get in touch with playlists. This is the time I'm going to do that. So your calendar fixes so much. And the first thing I would do is I would go and look for the free time. I'd go and say, well, I can't, I can't do anything here. I'm working. Okay, cross that out. I can't do this because I'm at the gym. Great. I'm, uh, that's part of this, this building, this momentum. Great. I'll put the gym in. You find the free time, whatever it is. It doesn't matter whether it's three hours or whether it's 30 hours. You go to your calendar, you find the free time, you block it out, and then you can start to figure out the time that you have got and what is the most effective things to put in there. For me, this one hack does wonders for your anxiety, your mental health, and even your self-belief, as you can see exactly what time you've got and what you can fit in. Number seven is priorities, or more importantly, how to prioritize. Most people think about a to-do list so I can get things done, but prioritizing is different. That is saying, what is the most important thing that I need to do? So prioritizing is more about taking away than it is adding in. When you've got a to-do list, which I personally don't like, when you've got a to-do list, you're trying to think of all the things that you can put in. You're now filling your time. 
But prioritizing is saying, that's great, but what's the most important thing? And if I live by the rule of only do the most important thing, only do the thing which is the most important thing, the thing that's gonna take you further towards your goal, now you're gonna lose half the stuff off that to-do list. So my advice would be to write all of the things that you need to prioritize, and I'd probably cross off the last 50%. Once you've ranked them in order, think about those top three things. What are the three things that will really, really make the most difference to you, your music, your promotion and your music career. Number eight, perfectionism is subjective. We've all got this perfectionism in us, especially as artists and creatives. We wanna make something that we are proud of. The problem is sometimes that gets a little out of hand and deadlines can shift and all of a sudden we are not putting stuff out or building momentum, leading us to feel like we're failing and building that anxiety. So I've got two questions for you. Number one is what would happen if you put that song out and it wasn't quite as perfect as you wanted? Would anybody notice? I know you would, but would your audience notice? If you stuck to that deadline and said, it's not perfect, but I'm still gonna put it out today. Or that track, which you've got on your hard drive. How many songs have you finished and said, ah, it's not there yet, it's not finished, and they're on your hard drive. What would happen if you started to put some of those tracks out and said, do you know what, I'm not gonna release it, but maybe I'll start putting it out on my socials just to say, hey, I made this, don't know if I'll release it, but I wanted to give it to you. What would happen? Probably some people would say, oh, this is great. Actually, this is my favorite track. Or some people might say, thanks, Ignore it, that's the worst that's gonna happen. But now I've got another question. What could happen if you put those tracks out? If all of a sudden you are putting out things faster because the perfectionism monster isn't quite there. All of a sudden you're putting stuff out, you're getting momentum and you're putting new stuff out. And what could happen is someone could say, that's the best thing you've ever released. And all of a sudden, someone picks it up or it goes viral. Now you've opened up an opportunity because we're all aware one song can change the game. One piece of content can change the game. And that idea of not putting something out means you've taken away that opportunity. So ask yourself, what could happen if I put this out? I know it's not finished, but the momentum of building providing value to an audience, that to me is key. Number nine is about understanding success. What does success look like in order to improve self-doubt? As artists and creatives, we're constantly battling between I have total belief in myself and my music and my creativity through to I feel like a failure and an imposter syndrome. So understanding what success looks like is important because we tend to think of it as this, this black and white thing. Success, or failure, but success is subjective. Success is a gray area. Instead of thinking of your music as success or failure, we start thinking about testing and learning and providing value to an audience. Now we're taking away this shade of this works or this didn't work. Instead, we're thinking how? How can we make something that is starting to navigate the algorithm and look after people on the other side? How can we learn and test instead of feel like we're failing. Number 10, celebrate the mini wins. Something that I don't think most artists do. We're always concentrating on the next thing. Oh, we've just hit a thousand followers on Instagram. Great, whatever, on to 10,000. We didn't celebrate how hard that was and how well we've done. About 12 years, I set up a business which was a management company. And it was all about getting work for bands and musicians. And every few days we get a new contract. And we had this bell, which basically said, the bell said, we've got a new contract. And everyone would be, oh, that was amazing. Because the bell was a lifeline. It was saying, we're working so hard, and that was the mini win. And every couple of days, the bell would go at the beginning. And then over a period of time, it would be every day. And then after a while, it would be three times a day, and five times a day, and 10 times a day. And then one day, someone rung the bell for a contract. And I remember thinking, will you stop ringing the bell? And I had this epiphany of, oh my God, that's amazing. I've got to the point where the bell is now annoying me because we've got so many contracts coming through. But I think about the first few months where I just needed a contract to keep this whole thing afloat. And that bell was the lifeline. It was the celebration of the mini win. It was saying, we're doing okay. And we've done really, really well. And you need to think about 
how good this is and what you're building. Number 11, sometimes you need to be selfish. As a creative, we love creating but we don't love regurgitating the same thing again and again and again. So sometimes you need to be selfish and say, I'm gonna make something for me. I'm going to create something which isn't the norm. I'm gonna create something that doesn't fit the same routine that goes around and around. Every so often, I'm going to be selfish for my own creativity. Now what this does is this prevents burnout, something that is very close to my heart because it's happened to me several times, not only as a musician, but also as a YouTuber, where I've got to the point where I just think I'm just going round and round in circles and it's driving me mad. And sometimes to basically say, I wanna make something different. I wanna go and create something because then that inspiration comes in. And then I don't need the motivation because I've got inspiration to do something interesting and creative. And sometimes you just have to be a bit selfish and say, normal service will resume, but right now I just have to look after up here and do something that inspires me. And number 12, and possibly the most important rule, which is enjoy the journey. We spend so much time focusing on the end goal and how we're going to get there and what we need to do every single day. Head down, keep on going, never quit. That sometimes we forget the why. Not only why are we doing this, but why we started. We started because we had that passion. We started because that first guitar or that first song meant so much that we just thought, I want to do this all the time. I love this. I want to do this again and again and again. But then, as the momentum starts to build, we start to forget about the journey and we start to think about the destination and we forget about the enjoyment and why we're doing this, let's face it, which is all about creativity and adventures and doing things and being able to create stuff that you feel proud of, sometimes that goes away and that needs to be at the forefront because if you lose that, you lose everything. A surefire way to build that stress, to build that anxiety, is to lose the passion, to lose the enjoyment. Think back to when you were practicing that guitar, practicing that piano, practicing singing, trying to get to that first gig in the rehearsal room. You could sit there for hours. There was no stress, there was no anxiety. It was sheer enjoyment and fun. And that is so crucial that you keep enjoying the journey and don't totally focus on the end goals. Looking after your mental health is absolutely crucial when it comes to a career in music because it's a bumpy ride and we are on that very fine line between frustration and sheer enjoyment. These are my 12 rules to looking after mental health, to getting rid of that anxiety and stress and making sure that you enjoy what you do. But I wanna know what yours are. In the comments below, tell me the ways that you reduce mental health, the way that you look after yourself. I wanna know. But more importantly, guys, another way to reduce that anxiety is to hit that like button. Probably isn't, but it would really mean a lot because that really does help the uh, the YouTube algorithm. And more importantly, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? This is the best community on the whole of YouTube, probably. So do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Otherwise, look after yourselves and I'll see you soon.